Hello and welcome to today's show. I'm Jamie Smith with the Kentucky Cancer Program. With the recent death of Patrick Swayze, pancreatic cancer has made national headlines. Today I'm joined by Carol Foreman, who's a volunteer with the Pancreatic, Ca pancreatic Cancer Action Network. She has a personal mission behind her work with the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, and we're excited to have her here today to learn more about her story and what she does as a volunteer. Welcome to the show today. Thanks, Jamie. If you would, just kind of first of all, just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, how you settled down here in Paducah, and what exactly you do with the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Okay, well, my name is Carol Foreman. My husband and I moved here about eight years, when the, year, eight years ago when the Carson Center was being built. He's one of the managers over there. And um, I have two grown daughters, and I have seven grandbabies, and I'm an LPN. And I never imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing today. But this time last year, about June of last year, my father went to a dermatologist for what he thought was just a lump on his face. And um, when he went, they did a biopsy, just a routine biopsy. And a few days later, his doctor, his dermatologist, called him and said that it, it had come back positive for cancer, but it wasn't skin cancer. And he told my father that he needed to be admitted for additional testing. My father actually thought that he was actually being given an early warning side to something going on in his body. And Daddy was admitted to the hospital, a series of tests were done, and a few days later my father was told that he had on the right side of his body innumerable tumors in his pancreas, his liver, his lungs, in his right shoulder, and it has spread even to his face and his head. My father was diagnosed with stage four metastatic pancreatic cancer. Two months later, on August 11th, my father died. And I guess it's the nurse in me, but I came back to Kentucky. My father lived in Louisiana. Came back to Kentucky and I was looking for information to understand mm -hmm. this disease that had taken him so quickly. And I looked in books and I looked on the internet and what I quickly found out was there was not a whole lot of information on pancreatic cancer. Right. And what really confused me was that it was the doc, it was the uh, the cancer that even doctors feared the most. Mm -hmm. But what I did find in my search was an organization. And this organization was actually, in other states, creating awareness, fundraising, um, doing advocacy, and it just, I felt like I needed to do something. So I contacted them to see what I could do here in Kentucky. And they let me know right up front that they had no involvement because no one had stepped forward as a, as a volunteer mm -hmm. with their organization. So I just knew that it was something I just had to do. So in October of last year, I volunteered to be the community representative for Western Kentucky with the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. And that's how our paths cross. <laughs> that's right. And it's been just a pleasure getting to know you and learning more about the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. And I'm excited today to be able to share with viewers that information because like you said, pancreatic cancer is not well known. No. You know, even like you said, doctors, you know, are kind of put off by it at first and because right. it's just the unknown and so it's great to be able to have resources now that we can all know about right um, so right. that people can become more aware right let's talk a little bit just about pancreatic cancer to begin with and some statistics okay. um, because some people you know you always hear about breast cancer colon cancer lung cancer we all know that those st statistics run um, but what about pancreatic cancer what are the statistics with it well, this year it's estimated that 44,030 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States, and 37,660 will die from the disease. So that's a big, um, it is a when big you look number. at that, the, you know, the ratio with that, it's a tremendous right. increase in the mortality rate. Yes, it is. Unfortunately. So right. there's lots that we can do um, to reach out to everyone to educate, um, and let's talk then a little bit about why pancreatic cancer is on the rise. Um, is it because, you know, well, you have people that are diagnosed, but why are they diagnosed at late stages? And so how have we seen the pancreatic cancer rise? And you're right, it is on the rise. And if we don't stop the upward trend of this disease, five years from now, there will have been over 200,000 Americans diagnosed with this disease, and only yeah. 10,000 will be around. We have to change the course of this disease is what we need to do. Wow, that's pretty shocking, 10,000 10, left out of 200,000. Right. Yes. 
That's right. Uh, well, let's talk about some symptoms then, okay. because people always want to know, you know, well, how would I know if I have that? What are some early symptoms? You know, a lot of things don't have early symptoms, but what about pancreatic cancer? Well, what we know right now is there's abdominal pain and back pain, um, gastrointestinal issues, unexplained weight loss, but these can all indicate other conditions. Right. Um, but the symptom that generally trigger, triggers a pancreatic cancer diagnosis is jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and eyes. Okay, okay. That's pretty much. Well, that would make kind of sense. I guess some people may not know where the pancreas is located That's either. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> on their body. So, um, and we do have a picture of a pancreas so people can see what that looks like. But um, could you kind of tell people maybe where the pancreas is actually located on the body? Well, the pancreas is, is between the stomach and the back. Um, it's kind of hidden underneath, so it's very hard. You can't palpate it. And most people don't realize it, but the pancreas is not an organ. It's a gland. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point. People, yes. people don't know that. Um, so what are some other risk factors? And we've talked a little bit about some of the gastro issues that some people may have, which are obviously some things that people have their whole life. But what are some other risk factors that a person might have? Well, you know, there just has not been enough research done in pancreatic cancer, so we really don't know how to prevent it. Um, and the, there are a few risk factors, and, and it would be um, like 30% of all patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer were smokers. 10% okay. um, it's hereditary. And chronic pancreatitis and diabetes are also considered risk factors. There's lots of research that still can be done with that. Exactly. And exactly. even that 10% that's hereditary, you right. know, maybe eventually there will be a magic test. That that's they exactly can. right. That would be great. Yeah. Um, well, what kinds of treatment might one encounter if they ever do receive the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer? The standard treatment for pancreatic cancer is chemotherapy and or radiation. About 20% of the patients could be eligible for a surgery. Um, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network encourages all patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer to consider clinical trials. The organization has a database uh, of clinical trials going on across the country, and they can do personalized clinical trial searches for each patient, individualized. Oh, wow. And they, they encourage all the patients to take the trial information back to their physician as an option. Okay. Yeah. Well, and we'll um, put up some information in a little bit on how people can actually contact um, the network to be able to find out more information about that then. Let's talk a little bit about survival rates. Some of these statistics you've been giving us aren't very good news, so we're going to assume the survival rates obviously are not going to be the best news in the world either. So let's talk a little bit about that. We do have some graphs that will okay. compare those to some other cancers as well. Pancreatic cancer has the lowest survivor rate, survival rate of all the major cancers. 74% of people die within the first year. Wow. 6% will be gone within five years. Um, someone like my father that's, that was diagnosed with metastatic disease, the prognosis is generally three to six months. The mortality rate for pancreatic cancer is so high because patients are diagnosed when the cancer has spread to other organs and that leaves very few treatment options. That's why we need more research, more funding for research, right. so that scientists can find early detection methods to give these patients a fighting chance. And so the research money that's out there with a lot of these institutions that do the research, the funding is obviously much less for pancreatic cancer. Definitely. So there's not the researchers out there with the money to do the research. Exactly. A researcher goes where there's a little more funding when they're gonna use the good talents. Yes, yes. Well, um, aside from Patrick Swayze, uh, there are some other famous people that have been survivors of pancreatic cancer, um, and obviously some other ones that have been taken because of pancreatic cancer. Right. So let's talk about a few of those survivors. The survivors, yes. okay. Well, we have um, recently in the media, there's Steve Jobs, the CEO of, of Apple. He was diagnosed in 2004. And the other one that comes to mind is Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's yes. also a survivor of pancreatic cancer. Good. So, I mean, it's always nice to be able to see survivors and right, to be able to put... We love our survivors. Yes, yeah, some faces um, to, the, to the cancer. Right. Now, what about some other people maybe that have been famous that have lost their battle? Well, Michael Landon from Little House on the Prairie died from pancreatic cancer. Donna Reed, Jack Benny. Um, 
uh, President Jimmy Carter lost four family members. Oh, he wow. lost his father, two sisters, and his brother. Bruce Willis lost a brother. Um, Loretta Lynn lost her brother. And Katie Cork lost a sister. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's um, not the best news to mm -hmm. hear, but it is nice to be able to know that there are you know, to be able to get that information out into the community, to put faces with the cancer, so that people can actually pay more attention to it and to advocate for more research to right. be able to find a screening or something to be able to detect this cancer earlier. Right. Um, who has recently become the spokesperson for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network? I think that this is very interesting and it's fun. Okay, well, Lisa Nemi Swayze became our national spokesperson actually about the same time that I joined the organization. And, um, and that was last year in 2010. Um, her husband, Patrick Swayze, which he's well known from Dirty Dancing, he lost his almost two year battle in 2009. So right. we're really honored to have her as our spokesperson. And you've got to meet her. I did, I did. So that's pretty neat that um, she's out there and she is making a difference. And she's using her voice. And that's awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Pancreatic Action Network, and I want to take a small break first. Okay. We have a short little commercial that we want to show um, that's uh, from the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, and we think that it is a great summary of some of the things that we've talked about. Okay. So we're going to take a break for just one second, and then we'll come back and learn a little bit more about the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and the resources available for you. See that small shape behind your stomach? That's your pancreas. If you're anything like me, there's a pretty good chance you didn't even know it was there. But all that changes when something goes wrong. Think about this. Pancreatic cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. More than 37,000 people will die from it this year. The five-year survival rate is only 6%. Picture that. Walk into a room with 100 people. Five years later, only six are left. That is a statistic you do not want to be a part of. These are people just like you. People like my daughter, Bridget. People like our mom. People like my husband, Andy. People like Concha, my mom. People like me. Like me. Know it, fight it, end it. Go to pancan.org. Welcome back. Today I'm joined with Carol Foreman from the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. She's a volunteer with the organization mm -hmm. here in Western Kentucky and we're excited to have her here. And we're going to learn a little bit more now about what the Pancreatic Ca Cancer Action Network is really all about. So if you could just kind of explain a little bit about the organization and what all they do. Okay, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is a nonprofit national organization creating hope in a comprehensive way through research, patient support, community outreach, and advocacy for a cure. It's the only organization leading the way to increase the survival rate of pancreatic cancer patients. Okay. Um, what kind of advocacy do you do? Obviously, you've got a personal uh, story attached to pancreatic cancer, so I know that you're really heartfelt whenever you talk about advocacy and your efforts that you're doing, but let's talk about those on the local, state, and national level that you're doing. Okay. As an advocate for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, my goal is to increase awareness in the community about the need for increased funding. Mm -hmm. um, currently, the National Cancer Institute allocates only 2% of its annual cancer research dollars to pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And the five-year survival rate of, can of pancreatic cancer has not changed in 40 years. That 6% has been there. And so that's far, t far too little funding for us to move forward. Right. But in February of this past year, the Pancreatic Cancer Research and Education Act was reintroduced to Congress. This is a bill that would 
have the, the, the National Cancer Institute develop a long-term comprehensive strategic plan that would develop diagnostic tools and treatment options that would increase the survival rate for these patients. So on a lo local level, right after the bill was introduced, I, along with some other community members, we went and visited with our representative, Ed Whitfield, and spoke with him asking for his support. And then in June, there were about 600 people from across the United States. Um, eight were from Kentucky, and we went to Washington, D.C. for Advocacy Day. And we met with our members of Congress, asking them to be co-sponsors of this bill. And when we went to Washington, we had one representative that had co-sponsored, and I'm proud to say that since we came home, we now have three of our six representatives, but we have a lot of work still to do. We still yeah. have we still have our senators to go and, and the rest of them. So I encourage everybody to contact their members of Congress and ask them to be co-sponsors of the Pancreatic Cancer Research and Education Act, and it's bill number S. 362 HR 733 okay. and it's real simple that's great real simple to do. and I'm sure that you all made a lasting impact on Washington because I'm sure you all were dressed out in purple and it was purple all over the hill that day <laughs> they, they had to take notice of you with they that. Did. Um, let's talk then just a little bit about um, you've talked about the research um, and how it is so underfunded compared to the other um, leading cancer killers and what is the reason that you think that that is? Well, the sad truth is that we have very few survivors to act as advocates for mm -hmm. increased funding. And you know what they say about the squeaky wheel, the squeaky wheel gets the grease and we've seen it happen for other conditions like AIDS and breast cancer. And pancreatic cancer has no, we have few survivors right. to act as squeaky wheels for this funding. So it's pretty much left to family members and for the community to step up and speak up for them. So you got a big job. You need some recruitment, don't you? That's to right. Help you. Uh, let's talk then a little bit about the patient resources because obviously the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network does several things. You've mentioned that several times: advocacy, you know, research, right. and but they also do some patient resources. So let's talk a little bit about that and what people can. Um, get as a benefit from them. Okay, PALS is what we call it, and that is our patient and liaison services, and it provides patients and their families with the most current information about pancreatic cancer. It gives them treatment options, clinical trial information, diet and nutrition, and also pain management information. Um, we also have a survivor and caregiver network, and this network connects patients, puts them in connection with other families that are going through the same experience that can, they can ask questions of each other and give each other support. Okay. And all this, all this is, it's all toll free. It's all free condition, free information. Okay. And also all the information is, the patients is kept strictly confidential. Okay. And we do have um, that information on the screen for people Good. for the PALS program Great. and an email address and a phone number for them to be able to call to get more information about that. Good. Um, let's talk about on the community level here locally, what kind of activities do you do um, and education are you doing in, in here locally where we live? Okay, as a local representative for the organization, my focus is on um, education, community outreach, and the advocacy. And what I've done is um, hosting awareness tables at health fairs, um, meeting with healthcare professionals to educate them about our patient services, and using my voice as an advocate. Um, and in the coming months, what we're going to be, what I'm going to be doing, and hopefully have a team helping me, is I'm going to be seeking, pursuing getting proclamations on a state, local, and county level so that Kentucky will join all the states across the country as recognizing November as National Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And I just think it would be so awesome to let purple do for pancreatic cancer what pink has done for breast cancer. Yes, definitely. Well, if someone's interested in maybe helping you do that, um, can you tell a little bit about maybe your Facebook page and how people can find you on Facebook? I do have a local Facebook page, and you would go to the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network Community Rep Paducah, Kentucky, I believe is how it's listed. <laughs> okay. And they can become a fan there and kind of follow what's going on here in, in this area. Um, and then, they, again, they can email me at my personal email, which is cf 
O-R-E at pancanvolunteer.org. And I think you have that all. Yes, so. we'll put that up on the screen as yes. well. Um, let's talk a little bit about your Facebook page. I find it very interesting. I love to follow it. Okay. And you do some things on Fridays where you ask not only do you provide inspiration, but you ask for inspiration from outside. So what yeah. was the idea behind that? Well, the national organization, you know, they, they have their own website and page. And, and we, we kind of do like a photo Friday and trying to get people involved, putting a picture of something that inspires them. And, and it's, it's been fun because sometimes it's not just someone in purple, but it might be a purple flower. Or I've even had some put their, their parent or their child, whatever yeah. brings them information. And it's just really to get people to interact on the, on the page. But it has been fun. Yeah, you have a lot of fun things on there. And one thing that I do want to talk about is it's not necessarily here locally, but you've participated in one before, and that's those purple strides. I have. And so could you explain a little bit about what a purple stride event is? I will. Um, as a matter of fact, I did participate in my first purple stride. Um, and about the time I joined the organization, that's what I was looking for is a walk. I wanted right. to walk for my father. And we didn't have anything locally, but in Orlando, Florida, where my daughter and my niece live, um, they have most states have affiliates and affiliates are, are groups of volunteers and they do everything that I do except they do fundraising but they have a team to do all this yeah. and they organize what's called a purple stride and it's a walk similar to your relay for life and everybody's in purple and they're raising awareness and raising money for pancreatic cancer and so um, I did go there last year and we had posters with my father and I even donned my purple feather boa and and my niece had her purple hair and and just it's just a lot of fun and and hopefully someday in Kentucky you know we'll be doing the same thing right um, we do have there is a, a community representative that that has joined on in Lexington so we're really excited that we're expanding a little bit but as a community representative you you're not really equipped to do the fundraising mm -hmm. I would like us to be able to do that someday oh yeah that's a big task to take on by yes. yourself <laughs> yes it is well, you've obviously talked about a lot of information today, and I'm, you know, there may be somebody out there that's sitting there saying, you know, I want to help. And so, how can somebody contact you or contact the organization to find out what other volunteer opportunities are available? Yeah, there's a lot of work to do. They can they can actually go to the, the organization's website at www www.pencan.org and get information about the website. They can donate to the cause on the website. Um, they can contact me locally to help me within our community. Um, and, and, our, and they can use their voice. Mm -hmm. They can use their voice to contact their, their representative and their senators and be an advocate. I think it's interesting. One comment you made to me one day, which I've, I will remember this forever now, because it, it just was said, it was so enlightening and it was so true of what you said, but you said when someone is touched by cancer, they automatically assume they have to start raising money and fundraising and that's what they throw their whole self into. But advocacy is such a big thing because if there's not legislation that's changed, funding's not going to change, action's not going right. to be taken to change that. So I think that's very powerful what you said to me that day and I'll always remember that now. And so I really encourage everybody to, you know, call and let their voice be heard. And you're right, Jamie, because the funding that you make when you're doing raising money in an organization, it's it's incredible and it's powerful. But it's a proven fact that the big dollars for cancer research come from the federal government. Right. They come from the National Cancer Institute. So that's why it's so important for people to know that two percent is going to pancreatic cancer research. Mm -hmm. And it's the cancer that we've had the least amount of research done on it. So the only way we're gonna move forward is for to get that increased funding. Right, and I think that commercial spoke volumes to 100 people in a room, you know, five years down the road, only six people are left. That's exactly right. And so it's very sad statistics that we obviously want to see changed. Right. Well, Carol, what's the one thing that you want viewers to take away from today? I know that you're so passionate about this, and you have such a great story, and you've been a pleasure to get to know, and I just want everybody else to know um, how you feel about it and what you want them to know. What I think is I believe that every single person that is diagnosed with any type of cancer, they should have the opportunity to be a fighter. They need to be able to fight their cancer. People diagnosed with pancreatic cancer like my father, they didn't have the chance to fight because pretty much they were dying when they were diagnosed. 
And, and this bill, this pancre the, the Pancreatic Cancer Research and Education Act, will give these patients an opportunity to fight. It's not going to bring my father back. It's not going to bring Patrick Swayze back. But my hope is looking at my two grown daughters and my seven grandchildren and knowing that there will be a future that they may not have to deal with this, the disease. And my hope also is to be able to see a pancreatic cancer, many pancreatic cancer survivors standing on a podium with other cancer survivors and saying that I fought pancreatic cancer and I won. It is time that we know it, fight it, and end it. It's a great message. And if you would, let's just um, end with this and kind of let people know one more time how to contact you personally here in Paducah. If you could give them your email address and your Facebook page again so they can maybe write it down and we'll put it up on the screen as well. Okay, my, my email is cf and it's um, C Foreman, okay. F O R E M A N, at pancanvolunteer.org. Okay. And then the Facebook page would be the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. And I believe it's Community Rep Paducah, Kentucky, is how it's listed. Okay. And what about the national organization? If they want to be able to call and contact them, do you happen to know how to get that information on the website? Well, the website is www.pancan.org. Okay. And they'll be able to find more information about the PALS program? Everything. Everything on Everything. there. Everything. They'll have a... There's even a link where you can click on the maps and see what's going on in the different states. And, and right now we have a really cool map up that is um, we're trying to, to turn the United States purple. So you can link on on the advocacy page and click on your state to see which states have had more co-sponsors okay. in Congress. And you can see which ones have had more action taken, which ones their, their representatives are listening. Okay. And Kentucky's getting a little bit of purple in there. We still need to get a little brighter, though. Okay, so, so. we need to make Kentucky a little brighter. Yes, we do. All right. <laughs> Turn well, the blue gas state purple. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Well, Carol, it's been a pleasure talking to you Thank today and learning more about the patient, uh, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and what resources are available to those in the community and as well as what we can do as taxpayers um, on the national level as well. So if you want more information about today's show, please call our office at 442-1310. I'm Jamie Smith and thanks for joining us today.